Hello Chasm family, this is Mark Ruggles again, and in this devotional we're going to talk about how we can overcome temptation, how we can fight it. Now, I know that Robert has been speaking uh, a lot about humility in his devotionals. Uh, in this devotional we're going to talk about humility and how we can use that as a weapon to fight against temptation. So if you would, please turn with me to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 6 through 10. So, starting in verse 6, it says, But he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. So in these verses, we see how humility or humbling yourself can become a weapon to fight against temptation. In verse 6, we see that God opposes the proud. He stiff arms them. He holds them back from his grace. He pushes them away. And in this context, I believe that we can say that grace is speaking about enabling power, the, the power to oppose temptation. So don't be too proud that you can't seek help from God. Don't, don't think that you need to do um, fight against the temptation in your own strength. Submit to God, and he will give you grace to fight against the temptation. Now, since God gives grace to the humble, in verse 7 it says, Therefore we should submit to him. He is gracious and gives grace. It is in our best interest to submit to him. So if we submit to God, there's another part of that equation that we have to look at in verse 7. We have to resist the devil. We have to fight against him and the temptation that he brings. And if we do that, there is an extraordinary promise. Something extraordinary happens. It says that he will flee from you. So as we submit to God and resist the devil, the devil runs from us. He flees. Now, don't be fooled. He won't stay away for long. He will leave you alone in the short term if you resist him. So what this verse promises us is that there are short-term victories to be had. So if we submit to God and resist the devil, we can have some short-term victories. Now, part of submitting to God is drawing near to him by faith. And we see that in verse 8. If we draw near to him, an incredible promise is given to us to contrast what we saw the devil doing in verse 7. The devil is fleeing from us in verse 7, but as verse 8 promises us, if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. So he doesn't flee from us, but God draws near, and that's a promise to us. But as he draws near, something else also happens to us. We have to, as we draw near to him in his holy presence, we have a need to cleanse our hands. That speaks about our outward actions. And purify our hearts. That speaks about our, our inward actions, our inward thoughts and attitudes. And so as we draw near to God, as we come into his holy presence by faith, there will be a need for us to repent, a need for us to think about um, what we've done outwardly and our attitudes inwardly. And verse 9 shows us that there is no room for laughter or mirth in God's presence in light of our sins. In the Bible, when men come into God's presence, they are always, always struck by feelings of unworthiness and inade inadequacy. Uh, I know Pastor Knight spoke about this even recently in one of his messages. We think about John in the book of Revelation when he was in Christ's presence. He fell at his feet like a dead man. We think about Peter when he was in the boat and 
Jesus told him to throw out for a catch on the left side of the boat or one, the other side of the boat. And he did so, and he caught a great catch of fish, and Peter was struck by the fact that he was in God's presence. And he said, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Anytime that we come into God's presence, there's going to be feelings of inadequacy and um, unworthiness. But we're not left to, to sit there and shrink in fear when we're in God's presence. Verse 10 gives us a great promise. It says that if we submit ourselves to him, he will exalt us. And so um, if we humble ourselves in his presence, if we exalt him as Lord over us, he will exalt us as his children and servants. And so a summary of all of this is that if we can overcome temptation by humbling ourselves, submitting to God, seeking his help and his grace, receiving that grace, and resisting the devil in that strength that he provides. So if you're feeling tempted, remember, don't try to fight the temptation in your own strength. Submit to God, look for his help, cry out to him, and he will give you grace. He promises, even in these verses, to do so. Submit to him, call out to him, he will give you grace, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let's pray. Father, we do come, even now, Lord, knowing that these are trying times. But God, as we are tried and tested, tempted in many ways, Lord. Help us, God, to remember to call out to you, to submit ourselves to you, to acknowledge you as Lord, to exalt you as Lord over us. And we look for your promise, God, that you will exalt us. God, we pray, help us to fight in your strength. Help us to resist the devil, that he would flee from us. And as we continue, Lord, to have short-term victories, one after the other, Lord, may we um, string together a number of these short-term victories, Lord, into a successful and fruitful walk with you, we pray. Give us grace, Lord, this day. In Christ's name, amen.